Welcome back to my build diary. The original owner of the kit completed the conrod for the most part, but uh, the opposite sides are not quite parallel and somewhat narrower, but we've compensated for the width already, but I do want to level out the two sides. So I found a good side on the surface plate and I'm just doing very light cuts on the other side to level it up. And when fitted to the machine, it rotates quite freely. So on to the crosshead, which is connected to the eccentric casting. And the first thing to decide is do I cut this apart and machine it separately, or do I use the eccentric casting as a fixture to start machining the other part? And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put the eccentric in the forger chuck and turn down the shaft in between until it is nice and cylindrical. It's very slightly off. And that will give me a reference to put in a collet uh, to do the rest of the machining operations on the crosshead. With the shaft trued up in the forger chuck, I can take a facing cut on the end uh, to place a center. This is Build Diary, not a tutorial. I am a rank amateur and I really don't know what I'm doing. If you are, however, enjoying this Build Diary, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please put them in the comments below. Uh, some comments from watchers have been very helpful so far. So thanks again to you guys and keep it coming. At this point I should have drilled the through hole, or at least through as far as it needs to go, for the uh, connecting rod, not the connecting rod, the shaft that goes through the middle of the piston, whatever that's called. Uh, but I did that later, and I think I would have had better concentricity if I'd done it here. I have an extension on my tailstock uh, center because the tailstock is really short and it just doesn't reach and allow me to get the tool post in at the same time. A uh, quick mark to mark the length that I want to machine this to, which is three eighths of an inch from the concentric, because the concentric needs three eighths of an inch. And again, this is not a critical measurement. I did set that caliper before it turned off and turned back on again. I'm using the parting tool here. Uh, as before, this is really the most rigid tool I have for getting into these tight spaces. Sorry about the creaky chair. I'll try not to move around. And uh, it seems to work okay for these very light cuts. And here I'm just taking it down to clean off the casting to get it cylindrical. This is not a critical dimension and I want to leave as much metal as possible. At this point I realized, of course, that I can turn the outside diameter of the crosshead in this setup and it's going to be more accurate than transferring it to a collet. So I'm um, doing that. It has to come down to 0.749, which is a 1,000 slip fit inside the 0.750 uh, bore in the casting. And this all went quite well until the very last pass where it didn't. That should be perfect. That should be it. Now at this point I had it down to something like 0.7495 and it was almost going in. It was sort of kind of tight and in retrospect I should have just used a little bit of emery paper to bring it down, but I thought, oh, I'll run it through. I'll do another spring pass, uh, take it down to 749. And uh, that was the wrong thing to do. Because on this pass, you can't see it doing much, but it's taking more metal off than it's supposed to. And now it's too loose.
four, six. I decided to continue on as a learning process if nothing else. If the part doesn't work, I'll have to buy another one and remake it, but uh, it should work. Uh, it'll just rattle a bit. And here I'm squaring up the crosshead in the collet uh, using a machinist square. And then we center on the collet to get our Y dimension. Our Y zero, I should say. Then I find the Z zero for the gudgeon pin. I call them a gudgeon pin. I don't know what Americans call them. Wrist pin uh, goes in there and using a center drill to try and taking it gently to overcome the divot that's already there. And, uh, and then drilling with the only 330 second drill I could find, which I think is out of my Dremel kit. Uh, which sort of went okay until this happened. Uh, right at the very end of drilling, it moved the collet block. I don't know why. Brass is funny. But uh, it seems the holes were okay when I cleared the hole out. It, it seemed to work. But this is part is getting dodgier by the minute. With the collet block central, we have to find our X dimension. X zero. Uh, so that we can cut the slot in the end, uh, which is three eighths down from the face of the casting. Not a critical dimension because the casting face is not machined. So I'm just eyeballing that and then a little ramping uh, CNC G code program adapted from the valve ports that we did in the cylinder just to uh, zigzag down ramp down i think they call it ramping down to the bottom of the hole and then another one to do essentially a square pass around the slot to widen it out uh, using conventional milling here perhaps i should have finished with a climb cut but it seems to work And this came in a, a little bit under size, so I did another couple of uh, spring passes to bring it out to the right dimension. And after about two spring passes, it did come out. These little eighth inch end mills apparently flex quite a lot when they're at full depth and you're side milling. Uh, but that now goes in. Oh no, maybe, maybe another, yeah, one more. One more spring pass. That's it. That works good now. That's a view of the finished slot. It's quite shiny and deep. Then I realized I've forgotten the hole in the middle. I had to recenter the whole thing and drill the hole in the middle for, and then that gets tapped. So hopefully that's concentric, but I'm not happy with this part. Um, if I am get perfectionist, I'll try and rebuild it. Uh, it does rattle a bit, but it does actually work. Uh, this is after running it on the electric drill for a little bit to loosen up the bearings because they tightened up when I tightened them up. They were okay before, but now they're a bit tight. So, And that looks fairly concentric, but I'm not 100% confident. We'll figure that out when... We get the piston in, and if it's not concentric, then we'll just remake that part. Thanks for watching. Uh, tune in again next time. I think I'll be doing the flywheels next time so that I can spin it and it will keep going instead of just twiddling and twiddling and twiddling and twiddling and twiddling.